climate change is affecting everything in the natural world, especially all of the living things. In countless science news segments, I've talked about the consequences of climate change, including wet bulb events in China, bleaching coral reefs, ocean acidification impairing the ability of shellfish to make their shells, the collapse of aquatic ecosystems, the collapse of temperature gradients and oceanic currents, clathrates melting in the permafrost that give off huge amounts of methane, and more. Unfortunately, so much more. Well, today I bring you news of yet another consequence of climate change. A new study published in the journal Nature analyzed the distribution and species composition of marine zooplankton over the last century. They did this by extracting and analyzing almost 4,000 sediment cores, or giant columns of material extracted from the sea floor. These columns contain layers of material, or strata, that tell us the story of the history of this area of the ocean floor. For example, different minerals can tell us about different geological events that might have shaped this particular area of the ocean, while different fossils, or preserved but not yet fossilized, corpses of biological organisms can tell us about the biological and the evolutionary history of this area of the ocean. Now the researchers were doing this with the zooplankton, or tiny, almost microscopic animals that live and swim around in the ocean. Clouds of zooplankton, and phytoplankton for that matter, are part of the basis of the marine food web, as they're a food source for numerous fish, crustaceans, and aquatic mammals, including the blue whale. By looking at what types of zooplankton existed in a given area, at a given point in time somewhere over the last century or so, they could map out populations of zooplankton and track their collective movement over time. What they saw was quite stark and compelling evidence of a vast shift in zooplankton communities. From the abstract of the paper, quote, we find that the Anthropocene assemblages differ from their pre-industrial counterparts in proportion to the historical change in temperature. We observe community changes towards warmer or cooler compositions that are consistent with historical changes in temperature in 85% of the cases. These observations not only confirm the existing evidence for changes in marine zooplankton communities in historical times, but also demonstrate that Anthropocene communities of a globally distributed zooplankton group systematically differ from their unperturbed pre-industrial state." Unquote. All right, that was kind of a lot. So, in a nutshell, what this means is that as human civilization really got rolling into the industrial era in the 20th century, our increasing CO2 output has caused the atmosphere to warm, which in turn has warmed the ocean. Species that live in the ocean, like a particular species of zooplankton, have a comfortable temperature range that they like to live in. When the temperature changes, that comfortable temperature range that the particular species likes will move across the geographic environment. For example, perhaps a species prefers cooler water, but now because the ocean is warming, that cooler water that they prefer is deeper down in the ocean. So the species is forced to live deeper down in the ocean, where there's less sunlight, less oxygen, and fewer ecological services. Perhaps they feed on some kind of fish, and their prey just doesn't live down here. That's a problem for them. It puts them under extreme evolutionary pressure. It's a very strong stressor. It can disrupt these species and cause their populations to dwindle, and that can have greater downstream ecological effects. So essentially, our warming of the ocean has massively disrupted these zooplankton communities. The species that make up a community in a given area have radically changed, as old species move somewhere else to find more comfortable temperatures, and new species that can tolerate the warmer temperature in the given area will come and move in. This disruption has occurred on a global scale. It's occurred all over the planet. Now this study specifically looked at zooplankton, but there's a different kind called phytoplankton, which are more plant-like in the sense that phytoplankton are photosynthetic, but they're also 
similarly vulnerable to the changing temperature and acidity of the ocean. We really don't want to mess with the plankton. Those phytoplankton produce about 70 to 80% of the oxygen that we breathe, and the remaining 20 to 30% is created by all of the world's plants. So if we disrupt those plankton, be they zooplankton that feed the marine ecosystem, or phytoplankton that produce the vast bulk of the oxygen that we breathe, we disrupt the things that we depend on, that our ecology depends on. We disrupt our biosphere. And as part of this biosphere, as part of this ecology, we will be harmed by this. We will come to feel the pain of our actions. We have to be more mindful of nature, and we have to reform our societies into something more sustainable. Or else, we'll destroy ourselves. Oh.